if everybody would rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, as we get started tonight, um, I want to welcome everyone to tonight's meeting and remind the audience of the public comment form, bright pink form on the back table. Um, it must be completed and submitted to the board secretary if you wish to speak to an agenda item. Board policy instructs that those wishing to be heard by the board to submit the form prior to the start of the board meeting. Three <laughs> minutes will be provided to each speaker. Due to open meeting law, board members are not allowed to address items that are not on the agenda. If you do not want to address the board but wish to give your comments in writing, you can do so on the same form and submit such form to the board secretary during the meeting. Um, so um, with that, I think item C is elect the chair and vice chair. Um, yes. I I'd like to make a motion with that in mind to move C to uh, additions to board items for action item for board action below a wrestling room and add um, to the consent agenda you know, uh, the and to uh, board items for oh. at, uh, board action uh, the, uh, the items on the list that are not on <coughs> on the um, uh, proposed um, uh, agenda as advertised, you know, ad ad additions to the <coughs> agenda. So you had a, you wanted to move item C under preliminary matters, elect chair and vice chair to be item M under section six, items for board action. And you also wanted to add J library IGA addendum under items for board action, K, bathroom remodel under item for board action, and L, wrestling room project under items for board action. And we also have um, addition, two addition, one addition to the consent agenda, Destiny Ryder as pool director, non-represented 12 months. Were those the only additions that you had? Correct. Okay, so do I have a second? I'll second. Okay, we have a second. All those in favor of moving the, it sounds like we're combining two things here actually, moving the <laughs> election of the chair and vice chair um, with the agenda changes on uh, the consent agenda and items for board action J, K, L, and M. Hoy. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, motion carries. So we will move forward. Um, Dr. Hattrick. All right, good evening. I'm gonna move this microphone really quick. Good evening, everybody. Um, before I begin my superintendent report, I do wanna take a moment to publicly thank uh, Dr. Elaine Placido for her service to the board in the Rainier School District this past year. Um, as you all just voted on at the end of this meeting, we will be electing a new chair and vice chair. Um, service on the governing board is a huge undertaking and serving as a board chair can be even more time consuming. I think anyone in public service would agree that this past year has been challenging and serving in a leadership capacity has been daunting. While very challenging at times, Dr. Placido fulfilled her role as chair with passion and always centered on what's best for students as well as how to follow policy while supporting the superintendent. The support provided by Dr. Placido has been invaluable, and I'm incredibly grateful for the role that you have played this year. But you're not off the hook, so we've got another meeting to get through. Um, Rainier is hiring for the following positions, HPE assistant principal, HPE music teacher, junior high ELA teacher, high school PE teacher, high school CTE teacher for our woodshop, 
assistant pool facilitator, lifeguards, cooks, and special education staff. And although this list may seem daunting, we have hired the majority of our new and open positions already, so we've just got a few left to go. Um, I also want to take a moment to express my deepest congratulations to the 78 seniors who graduated last weekend from Rainier Junior Senior High and North Columbia Academy. The, um, both uh, ceremonies were awesome, and I have, I have strong faith in our future, so uh, they were great events. I want to take a moment to update you on the City of Rainier IGA. <clears throat> so the IGA um, uh, establishes that the school district staffs the library and through a mutual agreement the city of Rainier and Rainier School District has decided to let the IGA expire. This will now be handled, uh, the staffing will now be handled by the city of Rainier um, and we as a collective, uh, Mayor Cole, City Administrator Jorgensen and myself are going to shift our focus from staffing collaborative to a focus on opportunities for our students such as service opportunities and internships. So I think it's a really great, uh, it's a win for our students to really focus on uh, student opportunities rather than a, a staffing position through the IGA. Uh, I want to give a few updates regarding facilities. So first, um, last month during public comments, uh, a public comment was shared or multiple public comments were shared that brought to question bathroom usage of our students. Namely, the question was focused on students using the bathroom that does not align with their birth gender. Following this meeting, I, following that meeting, uh, I met with over 40 LGBTQ2 SIA students, uh, current students, past students, and staff. This is a discussion that will require a great deal of time and would like to present to the board at a regular board meeting or special board meeting um, to explain the findings with plans for the 22-23 school year uh, to increase equity and decrease incidents of bullying, harassment, and discrimination. The work around equity as it relates to bathroom use has resulted in what we think is a great solution. The problem being solved was that some students feel uncomfortable using the bathroom if students identifying as that gender are also using it. Additionally, transgender students often feel shamed, judged, and deal with harassment for using such bathrooms, which is also not acceptable. Therefore, this summer we're proposing creating more single stall bathrooms for use by anyone who chooses to do so. We would have two two to four single stall bathrooms available at the high school by adding an additional single stall restroom. In the commons, we would remodel the gendered bathrooms to be one larger gender neutral bathroom. This ensures that every student will have a bathroom they can use and feel safe doing so. I also uh, want to make a, a, another facility comment regarding the wrestling room. Um, we're going to be taking necessary repairs to the wrestling room as outlined in a project scope of work. This is something that can be done over the summer and will be revisited during the action items of the agenda. Uh, Briarcliff Pool. So pending the board's approval, we've hired a new pool director who's in the final planning process to have the pool reopened in July. Information about schedules, programs, and fees will be published very soon. North Columbia Academy. The North Columbia Academy Planning Committee has met three times and we have made the decision to pause on implementing a new charter. Instead, NCA will continue to operate as a program next year, um, so we'll continue to offer that as an option for our students. I did want to make mention that you'll see in a future agenda items the facility use proposal. While I had intended on, pr on presenting a recommendation to the board to revise the facility use policy, uh, unfortunately through a variety of meetings with Oregon School Boards Association, Pace Legal Services, and our insurance provider, they still feel it prudent to follow the district policy to prevent unnecessary hardship. Instead of a proposal tonight, I will work with neighboring school districts, legal and insurance to better define the risks and develop a risk assessment that can be used to implement the policy with more options to those wanting to use our facilities. So I'll bring that to the board at our next meeting. Final two things. Um, during tonight's meeting, we'll hear some updates regarding exciting plans for the summer and next year. I'm very excited to see trips returning, hopefully, to the district uh, and to be hosting as many summer programs as we are this summer. And finally, as I conclude tonight's board report, I want to take a moment to thank all of the employees of the Rainier School District for their grit, persistence, and flexibility as we are just days away from finishing another school year. Another school year, I'll, I'll, I'll add, we thought was going to be normal, and once again, it wasn't. So next year is going to be normal. Um, I also want to thank all of our students and parents. We navigated what turned out to be another challenging year, 
but our students, students demonstrated dedication to themselves and their futures. We've accomplished many great things and I'm excited to see what next school year will be, will bring. I'd ha be happy to answer any questions at this time. Board members, any questions for Dr. Hattrick on his report? We're going into them in more detail. We are going in more detail, but Excellent. please remember to unmute when you speak. Excellent. So um, healthy and safe schools plan and annual statement. Dr. Hattrick. And I believe this is in your report section, board members. It is. So OAR 5810222223. Uh, requires that each school district on or before October 1st, 2016 have a healthy and safe school plan. So this is simply an update. Um, as you'll notice, the healthy and safe plan is regarding lead in water used for drinking and food preparation, lead paint, asbestos, radon, uh, and other topics. You'll notice there are two documents. One is the, the plan and one is the district's annual statement which is available on our website. No action is required, um, only that we present it to the board and make it publicly available, which has been done. Excellent. Any questions on any of the Healthy and Safe Schools plan, board members? No? Nope. Good. Uh, financial report, Mr. Hansen. <coughs> So our beginning fund balance was four million eight hundred two thousand nine hundred seventy-six dollars for May. Um, revenues: state school fund we received in three hundred sixty-two thousand one hundred seventeen dollars. Property taxes: nineteen thousand nine hundred sixty-eight dollars. And other revenue was ninety-eight thousand nine hundred forty-nine dollars, making our total revenue four hundred eighty-one thousand thirty-four dollars. Our expenditures totaled out to be eight hundred thirty-three thousand nine hundred forty-nine dollars. Um, and with the NA fund balance, it's 2.213. And I've attached the ADM report to the back also. Board members, any questions for Mr. Hansen? Um, I had one. So uh, you have total other revenues, $98,949. I'm just curious, what are the sources of other revenues? So our other revenues were... Um, You know, I'll have to get back to you on that because I don't know right off the top of my head what that is. Okay, thank you. Did anybody else have any questions? Nope. Okay, great. Uh, are the REA quarterly, um, Mr. Schimmel, Ms. Usher, and I um, were able to attend that meeting prior to this one. Um, and we received, um, really, I, this is not the first time I did it, but it was the first time I've gotten the, the written report it was really nice I didn't have to worry about reading my own handwriting to follow up on it so we we split it up and I Eric Mr. Schimmel has the first couple bullets bullet point is um, presented to us with uh, provided to the sixth grade classes. We're given alternative uh, entry is looking great due to the donations by Means Nursery, Mrs. Taylor, and the work by Mrs. Taylor and her class. Uh, the labor room is weed eated out in front of HPE, thanks in part by the uh, second grade and Mrs. Kishpa class. Um, many classes um, opening this week were uh, filled creatively by Mrs. Keplinger. Um, uh, Megan is doing a great job being super consistent with the students, uh, holding them to a higher expectation 
behavior issues are addressed immediately, and uh, I personally appreciate that. And I'll continue. Oops. Okay. I'll continue the positives. Um, the book fair was really exciting. Many students received vouchers to spend five dollars that wouldn't have otherwise been able to purchase a book. Students have enjoyed being having a PE and music program and look forward to attending. The incoming kinder kindergartners and families were able to join in activities during kindergarten registration night. It was nice to see families and students in the building for an event. And Danielle Nelson is grateful for the MOU to include nursing in the stipend for national board certification. Um, the HPE teachers would like to thank Megan Keplinger for her support this year. She, was, she has been available to listen to concerns and address them whenever feasible. She looks for creative solutions during a very challenging year. We applaud her for doing such an outstanding job her first year as principal. And then the high school was grateful for Mr. Blue this year. And I've got the opportunities for growth section. Um, so down in HPE's uh, hallway cabinets had to be removed um, for a couple different reasons. There um, was some concerns with space requirements. The fire marshal's um, inspection identified potentially some issues. Um, and then um, some expansion for small group work and the kind of cool, like, up what do you call that? Like a landing area. There you go. Um, so they're looking at some other storage options for particularly the sixth grade classrooms. Um, some classrooms are still in need of blackout curtains for safety, and those are, like everything else in the world, on order. <laughs> uh, uh, many staff absences um, are stressing out the sub system. Um, there's just not enough s s subs to fill the system, apparently. Um, it continues to be a high priority issue um, and something that we continue to work on. Uh, staff who teach in another position are only compensated for one hour of curriculum pay instead of their hourly rate. Um, and then there was some con concerns with the way the calendar was presented. Um, it left questions for many, and since an MOU had not already been agreed upon, teachers were frustrated by the lack of information regarding extra paid days. It was a surprise um, for many, and some teachers felt torn between summer plans and returning to work early. Um, so they suggested that maybe the calendar could have been presented separately from the opportunity for paid days. Um, and then uh, I think that was it. We talked a little bit about some other storage options. Um, and Mr. Elliott talked to us about um, the benefits of having some good flexibility with RVA and um, virtual and being able to kind of bounce kids around to where it was the best place for them to fit. So it was a really good meeting and I appreciated the extra time that um, staff put in and, and meeting with us and thanks to Mr. Schimmel and Ms. Escher for doing that also. Did I skip ID? Oh, the STEM update. Ms. Frederick, I'm sorry. I went flying right on by that. <laughs> Surprise, I skipped the STEM update. Do I have to push anything, Nick? I'm good. All right, so I was um, going to give you the STEM update. I was hoping to have some plans to actually show you, but that didn't come to be today. So um, last time I presented was back in March and um, at that time we were talking about Jackson Johnson who's a GIS tech for the lower Columbia engineering and he had come out and worked with two of the Vo Ag classes did all the data um, collection all for the upper pond and doing that so after that step um, both Jackson and Andrew Nimi who is the actual engineer for that um, both came out on May 16th worked with the two VOA classes again. Jackson got to present all of his information, data collection, and an AutoCAD Civil 3D to show the existing conditions of the plan. So that was pretty cool. Um, Tamara Waite went and met with our STEM Hub meeting and um, was talking about all of the kids and all of their um, enthusiasm in that type of a job situation. And then Andrew Nimi also came and then spoke to the um, students about the possibility of civil engineering and other engineering things. 
I think he even mentioned some of the things that he's worked on for different cities, St. Helens, Rainier, um, things, and they had mentioned something about the little walking bridge at the park. So that was um, part of that topic too. I spoke with Andrew today. He said that the plans um, are pretty well drawn up. It's not a finalized plan yet. And so at that point, we're in the detailed design process and the site plan development process. And that handout was given to you at the March meeting. And so he thinks that pretty soon we should be ready to finalize plans. Um, money is already set aside for that. That is actually in the Rainier School District. And that was given to us from a grant, I think, from the um, Northwest Regional ESD STEM Hub. So that money is available. It's ready to be put to use. Um, and I have two people who I think will take over this part of the project. And we're hoping to um, hire local. So a metal manufacturer I had already spoken to prior to getting the engineer plans and a construction site who would actually set it up. And so we'd like to do it all local if possible. And that's kind of where we're at. Um, we walked down also on a side note to the track shed, found out that lo and behold, Coach Pink staff had signs ready for the trailheads. So he's trying to locate the rest of them. So we'd like to be able to start putting those things up for the community to enjoy and to expand all of those things. So if you have questions about the deck, then that way I can send those on to Andrew. We might be able to include some of those things. It will be ADA um, approved, building code approved, all of those things. So any questions or? Update. Good. Yeah. I, mean, I didn't even have any visuals for yeah. you, so that's pretty good. <laughs> Were there any questions for Ms. Fredericks? Well, we've got um, a team that's going to keep things going. So um, Joanna Thompson, um, Shauna Taylor, Louise Johnson, and I think we might have Tamara Waite, and then also um, the new science person, Carrie. I don't know how to say her last name, Marino. Um, and I think they might be joining the team too. So I think that'll be good. Um, Greg and Riley have both been on the team before. I don't know if they'll continue next year or not, but um, that's where we're at for right now. And I will be leaving the team, but just coming back for visits. So not good. totally gone. Yeah, <laughs> that's good news. That's good news. Excellent. Thank you for that update. Mm -hmm. um, and I already went flying right on through E. Um, so F is our history trip, Mr. Demko. And it says... good. Amber Stout and Perry Decker. Okay, so the last few years I've been getting emails from our students, Mr. Demko, we start up another DC trip. And so with COVID, it's been on hold uh, before we decide to organize another one. The last time we went was 2015 from Rainier. We went with World Strides. We're gonna continue with the same company owned Explorica, which is under them. So we'll stay basically with the same company. We are proposing from our team June 26th through July 1st, 2023. It's going to cost $1,958 per student to go. We talked to Mr. Blue. We would keep our chaperones either 1 to 5 or 1 to 6, so in that ballpark. Um, we gave you a list of activities, hopefully, in your packet you got. There will be five days. First day would be sightseeing the memorials around D.C. Day two, we're going to go do a U.S. Capitol tour and the kids get to sit in on the House of Representatives or the Senate, depending on where our tour company takes us. And also, day three, we're going to the National Archives so they can see the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. So a lot of our eighth grade curriculum will apply to this trip as well that they're learning for their state curriculum right now. And then we go to the Smithsonian's and the kids get to choose which ones they go to in the amount of time that we have budgeted for that. Day four, they're going out to Williamsburg. I requested that so they can go see where George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, and all those people walked. And also we always ask for the competition, staff versus kids who can pull the, the bucket out the fastest with the water. There's a little competition with it. And they get to go in the mud and make bricks if they want to. Day five, we're going out to Jamestown. And then we usually end it at Bush Gardens, which is an amusement park. And the, it's made up like countries. So it's divided up in countries. And the kids get a pass um, to ride as many rides as they want to before we head back to PDX. 
Um, Amber is going to be, Ms. Stout is going to be our treasurer to oversee our money that the kids are going to raise this year. It's going to be a year of fundraising. We want to give the kids at least a year to fundraise. So I'll let her just say something real quick about that. And then Mr. Decker and Lisa back here have stepped up. They're going to be chaperones, but we're willing to take more chaperones, just who we have right now for the team. And we really would like to do this trip again. It's educational. The kids have fun, and they learn in a fun and creative way. So, Ms. Stout, real quickly, what are our finances looking at to do this? So, as of right now, uh, as he said, it's 1900 And w the plan is that I think it's every six, or what was the number? Where we you get have to one. at least one chaperone per six. And Mr. Blue was talking to you in five, right. so. Um, so... What my plan is, is we are going to go ahead and start fundraising this summer. We have already reached out to Columbia PUD, which the kids have done before. It's a car wash where they get $300 every time they go and wash the PUD cars. So that's one fundraiser that we've done with them. Uh, and what we've decided is that any kid who participates, they will get a portion. If they don't participate, they don't get a portion. There is a, if you look in your packets, there's a place where they can have a personal fundraising place or a page where their own family can donate towards their trips uh, if they can't fundraise or for whatever reason. And what we'd like is for the chaperones to be paid for, but if they can't be, we completely understand. We just want these kids to have fun and be able to go on an eighth grade trip. And I was going to add, too, since we haven't had one for a couple of years, there are some high schoolers that would like to go because with COVID, we haven't had the eighth grade field trip to D.C. So we would like to open it up to those high schools that seriously want to go. There's a couple that really would like to go because they didn't have the opportunity as eighth graders during COVID. So um, that's we'd want to mention that to you, too. We've also considered that this could be a, um, a merit based for the kids, too. So, you know, kids who stayed out of trouble all year and got great grades, those would be the ones that we would want to take because they're the ones who we show as being responsible. There is, last thing I'll mention, there is a set of rules they have to sign with the company. Yep. Um, and at the extreme end, students would have to fly home to PDX if they didn't follow the rules. Parents would have to come pick them up. So, so we're asking, um, <coughs> for your support if this is something we can start up again and again it would be 2023 kids would be out a week after school gets out depending on our snow days i'm looking at dr haptic for that and then i'm just giving me a hard time give me a hard time and then um will be the week afterwards so are there any questions so i have one uh great presentation uh this also could be moved to an agenda item as well if the board so chooses uh Due to board policy, we do need to approve uh, out-of-state travel a year in advance, so it would be appropriate to um, move this to an action item at the end of the agenda um, to give that approval so that they know that they can move forward. So I, would, I would take a motion um, on that, and then we can have some discussion. I'll make a motion. You can just move to approve you don't we don't need to move it anywhere we're on it now so we can go ahead and take the action on it so are would you like to move to approve this okay do i have a second i'll second it oh my gosh you guys everybody <laughs> wants to make the motion i'm going to give it to miss usher <laughs> okay so um any questions for mr demko or miss stout miss richardson But we're not asking the school board for any money to cover it. We're, we're just saying if we can do it, that would be great. If not, that's fine. But we want to make sure the kids are covered. So um, we've done it before. I know we had one student one year. Um, I remember doing the trip from Rainier. It was up to almost the day before we left to get on the plane one year. So, But we made it. We got her on there. So, But there's some kids that have never been on an airplane before. Um, it's a new experience you know, flying out of Portland. To, and I try to have them go into the closest airport. That's Reagan rather than Dulles because you have to drive in <coughs> farther from Dulles to get into DC so and they have tickets for us ready to go every place we go um, as the teacher they have the tickets ready so if we're going to the monument at for George Washington 
there's somebody there from the company with the tickets. I don't have to sit and hunt and get tickets. They already have everything everywhere we go. If I'm at Bush Gardens, they said, Mr. Demkler, here are the passes. If I'm at the hotel, they got the room keys right in my hand as I pull up and I go, Missed out, your kids, here's their keys, and pass them out. Their things are set up. That's what's nice about World Strides and Explore because everything is just set up. The bus is right there. And uh, so it's all set up. We don't do a lot of hopping other than keeping the kids account where the kids are at. So. Mr. Heisey, did you have questions? Uh, so just trying to understand that uh, you're asking them whatever is that raised? We're not asking anybody from the school. We just want to approve that we can start fundraising <laughs> and, and have a parent meeting um, one night for the kids that want to go. That's, we're asking for your approval to do the trip. We're not asking for any money from okay, the school you. board at all. Thank you, sir. Yep. Mr. Shimo? Um, I think this is a wonderful um, trip. I've never been on it, but um, I do know students that have. Um, uh, I think it's a great experience. Uh, I do, however, um, uh, I don't know if it's concern, just a question if you have concerns with the adding high school kids with the middle school kids on a trip like this that's obviously a... It was approved before on past trips. The school board approved it. We had okay. kids go. Okay. At least at the superintendent level in the past, it was approved and they went. So Okay. It, yep. Any issues that you know about? Nope. They're usually The kids that usually go are usually really responsible. I, I usually have all. We've never had a problem that I know of since I've done the trip. I've done it three times from Rainier and then once from another school district. So this would be my fifth time. Yeah, about fifth time I've done this. Okay. The kids that were also um, the high schoolers that we are vetting to go, they're officers of the History Club. <laughs> so it would be the president. She's right here. She's a straight A student. Never gotten in trouble. It's that we wouldn't let anybody go that could say, even potentially cause trouble. We we only are wanting maybe two high schoolers who just didn't get the chance in eighth grade because of COVID. I will throw one more thing into the school board. At night, there's security on every floor. The company provides security. Kids have to be in the rooms from ten to six. They do not have to leave their room, or the security notifies the chaperones. So we even have security at night as well on every floor so um once 10 o'clock hits you're in your room you don't come out till six thank you unless okay. there's an emergency <laughs> miss usher did you have any questions um i don't have any questions i'm just this is exciting and what a great opportunity for the students thank you mr harding i sent both my daughters you know, on, on on the trip when they were in school and uh, they enjoyed it and I think uh, my wife went as a chaperone. I've never heard of any problems that, uh, uh, being on, on the, this program, and I'm glad to get reinstated so the uh, kids can you know, ha have this reinstated for their enjoyment. There's even, uh, Mr. Harding, there's even medical. The company provides medical if some kid gets sick too. That we, they have service right away, is what, what my understanding. <coughs> Ms. Hendricks, any questions? I have no questions, but I think it's wonderful that this program is getting back up and going. I think it's a great opportunity for kids, educational-wise. Um, my kids went, you know, on this trip and absolutely loved it and were just amazed at, you know, some of the things in the Smithsonian's and that kind of thing. So I really appreciate um, you know, you all stepping up and taking the lead on it to get it going. But one thing I'll mention to you tonight, my last statement is, one thing that was neat the last time we went, there was people debating on the house floor that kids see on TV sometimes, and they're like, that's so-and-so down there. Yeah, they're, they're down there on the floor debating. So um, they were cool to see that too. Yeah. So I'll, th I'll throw my... Uh support in too. Um, my son David was like the, the quintessential Rainier history nerd going back to school to major in history next year. Yay. Um, uh, he didn't get to go on the, the eighth grade DC trip, but he did go to DC twice with Mr. Demko. Um, and I think our middle school history program is just absolutely top notch. And I think the best way to keep kids interested is to do really cool stuff like this not like this, like the history trip to D.C. So I'm really excited to know that it's happening again. So yeah, David got to meet the guy who helped design the Vietnam Wall. He yep. got to do that, and his yep. dad went with me. Yep. yep. 
I've got the photographic mm -hmm. proof. Um, so without any other questions, does anybody, you guys ready to vote on this thing? Okay, all those in favor of approving um, the DC uh, trip for history um, for eighth graders and a couple high school students, raise your right hand. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We appreciate it. Um, and now the summer school program, uh, Ms. Dumichel. Good evening. So, just to start us out, I've been teaching for the better part of 20 years. What I've learned is that I have to be prepared for some silly questions. And just for fun, I'm going to bring one to us tonight. Why do human beings need to have such large heads? Any mother who's looked at her beautiful newborn, one third of a baby is the head. And why? Well, science has actually studied this. Turns out there's a reason. Mr. Heise, if you'd be so kind as to raise your phone, I'd appreciate it. We all carry many computers in our pockets about that big. It fits right here in the palm of our hand. That computer can do all kinds of complex things and it can probably do math a lot faster than I can. So if that can do all kinds of complex things, again, why do I need such a big head? Well, it turns out the answer is to coordinate complex movement. So to put it plainly, humans have big heads because they need all those brains not to do math problems, but to dance. The ability to do math is kind of a fun side effect <laughs> that we get from having a brain large and complex enough to be able to keep all this going in somewhat of a reasonable manner. So keeping this in mind, when designing our summer school program, I figured that the most important things are physical activity fresh air, and fun. Because I think we'll be more successful when we follow what brains are naturally designed to do. So, that's gonna be a key component of everything we have planned out. We have YMCA day camps starting whew, next week. We've already got people signing up here for it going forward. Each one of those weeks has a separate theme that parents can sign up for. We also have our own in-house enrichment programs, uh, nine through 12. We're going to be getting credits back on transcripts. It's going to be our main focus. While the classes will be online, like that's the curriculum we're using, there's going to be multiple teachers in the room ready to help those kids the minute they have a question. They will not be alone. This is not going to be like them getting sent somewhere to go type away in solitude while <laughs> we grade from afar. There's going to be people actively working with them to get them through it as quickly and hopefully as well as possible. When it comes to our uh, middle school program, um, we've traditionally focused that more like a skills clinic. Like instead of, ah, you failed history this year, little Bobby, now you gotta come back and retake it. We just focus on, if we looked at the whole seventh and eighth grade, what do they need to know so that they'll be successful going forward to the next grade and in high school? And we just focus on those basic skills. Again, lots of physical activity. We've had, <laughs> A surprisingly good time making use of the stairs that have the multiplication problems on them because we use them. And one of the wonderful things is that we've been doing this for so long, we've been able to run our own numbers on it, and it works. When a student comes to the summer school program, whatever knowledge they've got at the end of the year, they have it when we see them again the next year. It's not just a patch that works one time. They just have it. It's theirs now. And a lot of what we do is form solid foundations that they can build on for the rest of the time that they're here. We also have our kinder camp coming up where students will be brought in and get to be familiar with the procedures that come with being in a school for the first time ever. My profound thank you to kindergarten teachers everywhere. I can't do what you do and I appreciate it. Somebody had to teach those kids to sit in a chair and it wasn't me and I'm grateful. <laughs> So those are our summer programs in short. There will also be swimming lessons. We are also signing up students to become trained lifeguards. And just putting this out there, since I know a lot of our community is watching, uh, yes, students have been approved to um, do various things for our summer school programs that will count towards their community service hours. 
which have been brought back this year after they were taken away because COVID. Good, thank you. Um, questions, Ms. Richardson. For the students that are going to, um, or hoping to become lifeguards, how is that going to look? Or where are they gonna get their training? How does that come about? And do they contact you? They do contact me. Um, they will sign up with me and then they will be put through training. We don't have exact dates and hours on when exactly that's gonna happen yet, but the first step would be um, signing up with me. Also, um, for our students who have been fully online and those who were on independent study, they had a rough start. <laughs> we had a time getting everything going. Now it's going pretty well. That's going much better now that we've had time to learn everything and get all in it. But nevertheless, it had a rough start and it needs fixed. So we're gonna fix that. Every fully online student and independent study student will have at least the next two weeks to work on their classes. And I will be available to either help them, like directly, or just to be there unlocking things and grading things so that the class continues to progress. And if I can interject really quick, the, the lifeguard certification course <coughs> is set. It's uh, this Friday, Saturday, the next Friday, Saturday, and for students who are getting their lifeguard certification to fulfill a role in any of our summer programs, the district will pay the costs of all certification. Um, it's offered through the partnership with the YMCA, and so they'll be Red, Red Cross certified in lifeguard as well as um, first aid CPR and deep water uh, certification, which apparently is really hard to do, but we have a deep pool. Cool. Good. Mr. Heisey, any questions? Mr. Schimmel, questions? <coughs> Training starts Friday. Now you're making me second guess myself, but yes. I just wondered if it was too late for people watching, students nope. that possibly. Please. Um, and if you no, don't have a way to reach out to Ms. Dumichelle, call the district office and we will help them. Okay. I'm yeah. in room 104 if anyone needs me. Okay. Um, my other question is as far as the summer school um, education, if, if a student doesn't want or doesn't need to be in there for like credit recovery, they just want like a refresher for mo advance. to advance to the next math class or um, English going from regular English to maybe a writing 121 um, is there can they come in there for maybe a two-week period versus the whole um, so the short answer is yes. okay um, along with my alliteration you know physical activity fun fresh air flexibility mm -hmm. <laughs> fits right in there uh, mr. blue and I have already been working together for specific students who've had specific requests um, with various family situations or jobs or that kind of thing, where we're working it out with them one-on-one. -on -one. And so when you look at the high school, summer school application, you actually have the option to start early. So the actual dates for in-person summer school will be July 18th through August 11th, but their students will be starting Thursday. I already worked it out with their mom. <laughs> so the class will be there. They'll be ready to go. I will be online ready to assist. So an important thing is they will not be left alone. <laughs> but we are going to be flexible to them and their needs, um, which we have found is super important. Um, the largest chunk of students we have who are fully online right now, it's because they have jobs. And so they are able to go to those and work around it while continuing to stay up to date with their schoolwork. And so we're just going to continue that sort of flexibility forward, understanding that this entire pandemic has been a historical event. <laughs> like as a history teacher, I look at it and it's a once in a hundred years historical event. And that leaves its mark. And our kids need our help and support um, getting to where they're good. So we're going to provide that for them as best we're able. Cool. Ms. Escher, Mr. Harding. Well, I'm, I don't really like the looks of the uh, summer school uh, program where it's uh, free and transportation is provided and there's breakfast and lunch. And I'm hoping this will entice a real good turnout for this, for this program. I would like to have it's over and see how our 
a ten to four. I'd be absolutely delighted. I can tell you that we already have forty-five signed up for the enrichment, about evenly split between one through six and seven through twelve, and then we have fourteen signed up for our YMCA day camp. So turnout is already really good. <laughs> and I can also assure you, um, I've spent many, many times today talking to individual students who are seeking out my room to ask um, what they can do, when things are going to start. So interest is sky high, but I'd be very happy to do a report afterward. Ms. Hendricks? I have uh, a couple questions for you. With this summer enrichment program, is there going to be days for certain, like math, English? Um, not so much. We don't really integrate that sort of thing. So, it, and it depends on what level it's at because we tailor it to the age group. So, middle school is kind of a good in-between point, so I'll go there. One of the things I love about middle school, summer school, if they look squirrely, we take them for a walk. They do not have to sit there in that chair when they need to move. Um, if you look at scientific research, it takes a kid about 20 minutes of physical activity before they're ready to sit for an hour. And our regular school year can't always accommodate that. We don't have people who can just be like, okay guys, let's go outside. Um, but during the summer we can. And so it's not gonna be so much specific days. Um, first, the program would be tailored to the students. So like when the middle school students come in, they go through a bunch of like basic skills tests to start. Like um, their times tables, division tables, single digit addition and subtraction under 20. And we see where they're at as a group. And what we focus on is, what do you already know, but what do you need? Because we're not trying to make them sit through something they already know. We're trying to beef them up where they need us to. So if you pass your addition, pass your subtraction, but you can't get through the multiplication, we sit there, we look for any patterns, like, is it your four is holding you up? We have them work exactly there and then go back. And once they pass that test twice, they don't have to take it anymore. Even if everybody else in the class has taken that, they will move on to the next test. So it's very personalized. And usually we find there's a greater need for math skills than there is for like a lot of language arts skills or even history. So as much as possible, we combine things. Um, so we've had really good success with um, Mr. Perry, who's one of our PE teachers. He'll teach you where all the muscles on the body are, but that is fully integrated with our vocabulary. So I'm obviously not super sporty, but even I can still tell you like bicep, tricep, quad, because it has two muscle heads, three muscle heads, four muscle heads. And these are the kind of things we learn like as we're walking back and forth between the bus shed and the light pole. Um, we count our laps in Greek and Latin because that's how we do. <laughs> but also because that's what works. And so it's gonna be very tailored, which makes it a little difficult to be like, this is what we will do. Um, but it's gonna be tailored to support kids where they need it and not make them rehash things they don't. So the way that plays out at the high school level, when a student finishes their class, as long as it's okay with their parents, they can go home. <laughs> they don't need to sit there. And I think that's gonna do us a couple of favors, which is that it's gonna provide some motivation. <laughs> if I know I can go home early, if I just do all my work and get it done, I think that's motivating. They've certainly been asking for some years. But if you want to do that and haven't been able to, then as the class gets smaller, you're gonna get more help. Because the people who don't really need to be there, usually the ones who spent the year like yakking, um, they'll get their stuff done and go, and then everybody remaining will have that much more help. So. How, how would this work um, with uh, families that split families where they spend, you know, a week at their mom's and a week at their dad's? Excellent or? question. I actually had that one come up today. Um, a lot of times we just work with the family. And if dad just can't bring them that week, okay, we just make sure all their teachers know. <laughs> because one thing we do is we count them a lot. We want to make sure nobody's wandering. We know where everyone is. And as long as we know that, cool. Um, worst case scenarios, you're going to have less time if you need that help and can't get to it, but you still have more than you did. So we just work with families on that case by case. I know a couple of families are worried about state fair 
which again, we'll work around that. Good question. Good. Any other questions? questions. No. Nope. Thank you, Ms. Dumichel. Sure. Okay, public comment. Do I have any? No public comment? Excellent. Okay. Not that I don't enjoy public comment. Um, consent agenda are the is th are the items that we take with one vote. And as a reminder, we had added a B item E, um, hiring Destiny Riders, the pool director, non-represented, 12 months. So do I have any motions on the... Um, consent agenda. I also want to make sure that um, board members notice the um, item D, the policy update, so this will be the second and final read. Okay. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor of approving the consent agenda, raise your right hand. Excellent. It passes. And now we're moving into items for board action. Um, budget resolution 22-23. Mr. Hattrick, did you have any presentation that needed to be made with this? Uh, there's really no presentation. Uh, you were part of the budget committee. However, I will simplify the ask, which would be on the second page um, that follows the resolution. Uh, as long as we refer to the resolution and unfortunately the motion would be everything on that that second page would be fine I am actually happy to make that motion um, I know it's a little unorthodox but if nobody has any problems with that um, so I would move to approve the Rainier school district budget for 2223 as follows um, general fund Twelve million seven hundred fourteen thousand dollars, seven hundred and fourteen thousand three hundred fifty-two dollars. Special revenue funds five million nine hundred and twenty-one thousand six hundred and five dollars. Debt service funds one million four hundred fifty-eight thousand dollars. I can't even talk. Let's try this again. Oh, debt service fund one million four hundred and fifty-eight thousand five hundred dollars. Capital Project Fund, $231,095. Agency Funds, $107,640. Total All Funds, $20,433,192. As presented or amended with a tax rate of 5.436 per 1,000 of assessed value to be assessed in support of the general fund. Can I get a second? Second. second. Okay, Ms. Hendricks, I'll give you the tiebreaker on that one. Um, is there any discussion? Am I seeing none? Okay. All of those in favor of the motion to approve the budget for the Rainier School District 13 23 uh, budget resolution, raise your right hand. Motion. Are you abstaining? Okay. okay. And I would be happy to vote for it, even though I wasn't here for this. Did, did you raise your hand? No. I thought you did. Okay. So it carries, and there was no opposition. Okay. Uh, policy JECB admission for non resident students. So per policy JECB, um, the board establishes the number of student transfer requests into and out of the district, and we would recommend that we follow the same number transfer in and out as we did last year, which was 15 transfers in, 15 transfers out. Questions from the board? That, that's all there was in, involved in, the, in that policy was the number? Yes. Well, I make a motion that we approve that. Um, 15 number. Second, anyone? I'll second. Okay, Ms. Hendricks. 
any discussion? Mr. Heisey? This is the uh, same just like the last one we had, correct? Yeah. Thank you. How many students did we have transfer last year or this year? I should have warned you, huh? Sixteen in and sixteen out. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but our policy number is fifteen. Yeah. Okay. So that can also account for uh, previous transfers in or out. Okay. Any additional questions, board members? No. Okay. All those in favor of approving board policy JECB, uh, setting the number at fifteen for transfers in and transfers out. Okay. Motion carries. No opposition. Uh, item C, Midco Transportation Contract 2223. Dr. Hedrick. Uh, so, hopefully, you've had a chance to review the uh, Student Transportation Services contract uh, from Midco. Uh, really, of note, the biggest change is the 8.72% increase, which equates to $2 an hour a raise increase for the drivers. Um, hoping that that'll address some of the, the driver shortages. Uh, one of the other things that is uh, outlined is that through this, we will have a fleet average of less than eight years old per bus. So this summer, two new buses are coming and four new buses next year. So it'll address a lot of those issues. Questions from the board? Ms. Richardson, any? I'll come back to you. Mr. Heisey? Mr. Schemmel? Ms. Ushers? Oh, you do? Uh, I know with uh, activi out, uh, extracurricular activities, the bus sets are always in hot demand, mm -hmm. uh, especially with trying to save money for the district, um, coaches, teachers, um, staff are asked to to use those is there has there been any talk about trying to add more bus sets to our fleet i know we generally have two but um there's a lot of cases where we just we don't have them so we have to send a a, a driver on a on a regular bus mm. uh that hasn't been discussed um that wasn't something that was brought up previously prior to negotiating the contract so it's something that I, I'm happy to bring up to Midco. Okay. Yeah, I, I just know that they're in hot demand, especially um, winter season. It seems mm -hmm. to be more prevalent because there's more activities with middle school sports as well. But sure. it might be a, a cost savings down the road. Mr. Harding, any questions? Ms. Hendricks. Um, I s share uh, Mr. Schimmel's concern about having an adequate number of, you know, the buses for uh, coaches to take and transport the kids. So I think it's really, you know, because I know they run into some issues last year with there not being enough, you know, and then it costs, you know, more money because we have to send a big bus out. So, and... Just off of that, where are we with uh, passenger vans? Uh, I'm hoping to present at the next, mm, unless I have to do a special meeting, but uh, I've been doing a little bit of research with one of our grants that may be able to fund a couple. Um, they may not be 12 passengers. I won't go into too much detail, but um, I'll present it at the next meeting if I've got everything for it. Okay, thank you. Yep. 
Um, just a couple comments. Um, I think the CPI um, adjustment for subsequent years is actually really interesting language. Um, so I'm supportive of it. I just had never seen it written like that. So I appreciate that. And I'm kind of curious, and you probably don't know the answer to this. You might. I'm I'm really curious. What is the average age of a school bus? I mean, I'm. It's interesting to see that we're saying it's not going to exceed eight years, and then it has a ceiling. For those people that aren't looking at this, it says um, they're going to be replaced gas powered or replaced within 12 years, and diesel within 15. But eight years is. It seems like I mean, my car is probably eight years old. So your question is... I'm just kind of curious. What is the, the national average, average is 20 and ours is 8. Oh, no, I have perfect. no idea. That is complete garbage. <laughs> That's so I have no idea. <laughs> I had no idea. It's really interesting. Hmm, okay, cool. It, Ms. Richardson, did you think of what your question was or did you... Okay. No need to go back around the horn again, right? Everybody good? Cool. Um, so all those in favor of approving the uh, MIDCO... There was no motion. Oh, there was no motion. Never mind. <laughs> How about a motion? Anybody? Now that we've done the whole ask the questions and then motion thing, you'd think I'd know how to do this by now, wouldn't you? I'll make a motion we uh, approve the Midco transportation contract for fiscal year 22-23. Beautiful. Second. Excellent. All those in favor of approving the Midco um, contract with Rainier for 22-23, raise your right hand. And motion carries and no opposition. I'm just trying to get down to item M real quick. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How about the athletic program, Dr. Hadrick? How about the athletic program? So uh, in your board packet, you'll see um, a three-year look over regarding revenue, transfer, and expenses for the athletic program. Now, there's a reason we did it the way we did. So I wanted to present the data to the board. Um, so you'll see the first page is fiscal year 2018-19. 1920 and 2021 uh, so we go from normal year to kind of normal year to not normal year and so the 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 amounts should be reflected in that so what I'm hoping that the board can do is over the next couple of weeks look at this think about it there's a couple questions that are going to come out of that so the next meeting in July is when we look at our um, resolution one which establishes athletic fees admissions prices uh, we also uh, will be bringing to the board a recommendation on uh, compensation for coaches and so all of those are part of this discussion so what I'm hoping uh, each of you can do over the next couple of weeks is really review the trends that you see uh, maybe list some questions that you have so that collaboratively we can come up with uh, a proposal that I'll be happy to present to the board at the next board meeting so hopefully my ask makes sense. So you're giving us homework? Yes, I am. Hmm. <laughs> OK. Did anybody have to, any questions for Dr. Hattrick? There'll be a test at the next board meeting. <laughs> I will be absent. Um, Your homework will be due in advance. <laughs> <laughs> my mom is going to write me a note. Uh, superintendent goals 22-23. All right, so moving along, um, per contract, uh, in the June board meeting, I, I present a professional development plan for the following year. Uh, the first page is the one that was in the electronic board packet. I was requested to add a little bit uh, detail, and so the second page has additional detail, uh, including the budget amount and then approximate costs of um, the different trainings that have been proposed on the professional development plan so I'd ha be happy to entertain any questions on that what is AASA the American Association of School Administrators ah. it's the superintendent organization questions from any board members oh and it says it right there on the third page <laughs> they're all furiously reading 
Mr. Schimmel, looks like you have a question. Um, I'm obviously uh, new to the board, so I'm not familiar with what's done in the past as far as year to year. Um, but the, um, the national superintendent um, conference mm -hmm. slash uh, certification training, mm -hmm. is that something that has, is it a, a yearly thing or is it like a one-time um, process? Is this something that comes up annually is what I'm asking? The, actually all of the conferences are, na are, are annual conferences. So the law conference, the Seaside Conference, OASE and OACOA, AASA National, and then the AASA National Superintendent Training, um, that's a two year. And so they break it up. Um, so we split the cost from year to year. So that one was the only one that would be a recurring cost. Actually, most of the conferences are the same every year. Are any of these, um, sorry, are any of these um, like required by the state or recommended? Um, no. Okay. Other questions? Any board members? No. I know in, in my line of work, um, having those um, professional certifications is um, a real benefit, not just for the person getting the certification, but also for um, the jurisdiction or the agency or whatever. So I'm glad to see that you're, you're doing that. And usually, and it looks like you have a capstone project, so usually the, we'd get to benefit from being mm -hmm. the, uh, the guinea pig for that. So that's awesome. And, and one thing to note, the last two years, what, so last year, there was very few um, professional development opportunities. Uh, this year, there were a few more, but still not full. So uh, this will be, next year will be the first year um, to actually take part in a lot of these professional development opportunities. Good. Did you want to talk about your goals? or evaluations, or just were they the just in there? I think the board makes a motion first on the professional development plan. Yeah. So to, again, now that we've talked about it, <laughs> we need to have a motion to approve the professional development plan. I and then we approve the superintendent professional plan for 22-23 for Dr. Joseph Patrick. Any second? Okay, thank you. Any further discussion on just this professional development plan <coughs> with the conferences and the certification? Nope. Good. Okay, so all those in favor of approving the professional development plan for Dr. Hatrick for 22 23, raise your right hand. Okay, all in favor? And now the goals. So also in contract is, and I believe also policy, is superintendent goals. Uh, and, and actually what the goals you see here are very similar. Uh, and I, I repeated many of them because of the feedback from the evaluation that was done. Um, one of the things that you'll notice is under quality education, uh, now there's two processes. One, implementation of the ELA curriculum that was adopted this year and then starting the cycle again, which mimics the ODE curriculum adoption cycle uh, for math. Uh, additionally, strategic planning has been tabled for the last two years. Once again, tonight is the night to blame the pandemic for everything. So um, no more tabling that, so looking at that. But then I want to draw your attention to pages, well, page two in particular, because there was a lot of discussion and questions about um, kind of a check-in cycle as well as when we're going to be doing things. So with it on, on the second half of page two, you'll notice I've pre-scheduled check-in meetings that align with board meetings. So there will be no surprises. In addition to um, February 13th to March 3rd, when the board would be gathering information and rank on parts one and two so that we could have the evaluation done uh, in March uh, per the contract. So. I've spelled that all out that so we can uh, initiate this process right away. So maybe we can try to do this one the right way and we'll 
will approve a motion on this and then have a conversation about it. So what do you guys think? Anybody want to make a motion? Um, yep. Goals. 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 And evaluation schedule. Excellent. Um, now, discussion. Ms. Richardson, anything? Um, so, with the check ins, down there, is that like all of us meeting? I'm, I'm a little bit confused on the check ins prior to the board meetings for this. Uh, are you talking about the fourth bullet there? Yes. In executive session. You. You're welcome. So they would be nested in the board meeting? Okay. Mr. Heisey? Okay, no. Mr. Schimmel? Um, on the first page, um, under safety, the safety uh, evaluation, safety committee recommendations um, evaluating, um, does that committee, like how often does that committee meet and how many are on it. So it was reestablished. Oh, I don't know the number off the top of my head. It was reestablished when we were doing the facility assessment with the TAP grants. Um, and so now that that work is done, it'll reinitiate in the fall. Um, when we were meeting ballpark, I'm trying to look around and see if anyone is in the, in the room. I think we had like eight, eight to 10. So next year, who knows more? I hope. Ms. Usher, any questions? Mr. Harding, any questions? Um, not really, except that, in my opinion, the uh, check-in meetings, uh, uh, quarterly meetings, that it seems to be the September and November ones. I think there should be a time limit, you know, of an hour, hour and a half, two hours. So, I, so there's a time limit. That the meeting can't take excessive amount of time. I'm happy to limit it to 30 minutes. <laughs> well, Are you talking about the executive session review? Uh, no, the, the uh, yeah. No, the check-in meeting review performance. Oh, yeah. sure. On, on that, I, I think that should be limited to an hour or hour and a half. Not a problem. Or less. Or less. Yeah. yeah. Or less. Or less. That is not or a problem. Miss <laughs> uh, Hendricks, any questions? I don't have any questions or comments either. Um, I was happy to see the your goals kind of brought back again. I think that's, that's good. So um, all those in favor of approving the superintendent's goals and the evaluation process for 22-23, raise your right hand. And again, it carries with no opposition. Uh, MOUs, Dr. Hedrick. So as we enter into the MOU section of our agenda, we have five. Um, what I'll do is I'll talk about the first two. Wait, which are the first two? Summer work, REA, okay. and OSEA. So we'll start with summer work, which actually I believe are the probably third and fourth in your packet. Yes. So these are almost carbon copy from last summer's um, summer MOUs, which just allows us to use grant funds and hire s current staff to fill summer positions. Uh, we also incentivize the work by adding an additional stipend on top of uh, the hourly or daily rate. And so th the terms of both the REA and OSEA MOU for summer work is in your packet. So we'll need a motion and then we can have discussion. And we can take both of these together in a single motion if you would like. OSEA and REA, MOUs. I 
REA and OSEA. Thank you. Thank you. Any discussion? Ms. Richardson? Mr. Heise? Mr. Schimmel? No. Ms. Usher? Mr. Harding? No. no. Ms. Hendricks? No question. Okay, good. I didn't have any questions either. Um, all those in favor of approving the MOUs um, for <coughs> uh, summer programming with OS <laughs> OSEA and REA. <sighs> Raise your hand. Okay, motion carries unanimously. Um, Dr. Adrick? Okay, the next set of two our title professional development HB 4030 HB 4030 is House Bill 4030 which is the retention and recruitment money that was allocated by the state of Oregon uh, Rainier's allocation is 111,647 and 13 cents uh, this will cover uh, quite a bit of professional development it, we will supplement it with some ESSER funds so one of the, the problems that we've identified is over the past few years, again, pandemic, uh, staff have, have had what I believe is insufficient training. And so we really want to give everyone an opportunity um, to get as much professional development before the school year starts. So that would be the use of the House Bill 4030 money, uh, providing four total additional days that's outside of the contracted days. So... That would be the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, July, who knows? Who's the all of you? Nobody knows. August. August. The, very end. Um. the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday before Labor Day, staff would come back for those three extra uh, professional development days. And then we, we were adding one on before the statewide in-service, which is October 7th. So the additional professional development day would be October 6th. So those four days would be um, paid out of the House Bill 4030 and some ESSER funds for the additional professional development. Um, we're kind of looking at going back to basics and um, what was the theme? A whole new, no, I'm thinking, I'm wrong movie. <laughs> I don't remember. It's now getting late. <laughs> um, but really back to basics. So we're talking classroom management, we're talking differentiation, multi-tiered systems of support, uh, positive behavior supports, um, as well as the implementation of our new curriculum. So there's a lot of professional development with that, professional development with our internal assessment, the iReady system, and then additional professional development on an assessment system and tracker called DESA, which will support our multi-tiered systems of supports. So uh, both MOUs are essentially identical, so those could also be considered uh, together. Okay, motion, and then we will discuss. Make a motion that, oh, go ahead. No, you go ahead, yours is still on. <laughs> Make a motion we uh, approve professional development for House Bill 4030 for OSCA and REA. Any second? I second. Okay, thank you. And discussion, Ms. Richardson. Mr. Heisey? I concur with Ms. Uh, Richardson. Good. Mr. Schimmel? Nothing? Ms. Escher? Um, so with these added on, is this something that they can plan for for the following years? Is this uh, going to be uh, happening or...? The funding source, no, but okay. possibly. possibly. I mean, because we can still look. We've got uh, ESSER 3 that would be available, 
So I think what we'll do is evaluate in the fall and determine a plan for the next year. And then at the end of the next year, we'll be bargaining with both unions. And so if, if we think this is something that we want to do always, we may just uh, talk about what the work year looks like okay. and including that. So now um, staff that aren't able to attend, they're not going to be penalized. They just go unpaid. Correct. Extra days. Yep. Okay. Yep. And so I've, I've been talking to both unions just about, you know, how, because one of the, one of the challenges is if they can't make it, we still want to prepare people uh, with the information. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on a couple potential plans, but the hope is that most will be able to attend. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Mr. Harding. I think any time you get a grant for additional training and you have a curriculum uh, improvement like we're doing, I think it's a good thing. Ms. Hendricks? I concur. I think the extra training is very good for staff, especially, you know, the pre-COVID stuff. It gives them, you know, an opportunity to catch up and try to, you know, maybe somebody has ideas on, on how to get these kids back motivated. And then be positive. Positive. Mm -hmm. not, co not COVID positive. Just not COVID <laughs> positive. Excellent. No. Just, just regular old positive. Just Excellent. positive. Excellent. I think my only question is, and I, I, it's probably just because, you know, I, in, in a workplace when we have some people getting paid for working and some people having an unpaid time off, just trying to make sure that we've thought about all of the different structural, you know, if people are earning some sort of benefit, mm -hmm. you know, that other, yeah, so. I'm sure you've thought of those. Do you know what I'm getting at? Yes. So, like, if you were earning sick time or mm -hmm. whatever. Okay. Yep. So that it's really not a penalty, even though. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Cool. Any other questions, anybody? Nope. So all those in favor of approving the 22-23 pre-contract pre-contract year work days for OSEA and REA, raise your right hand. And it carries all. And finally, an MOU with OSEA for I think the pool. Pool, yes. And um, first. <coughs> I want to acknowledge we'll edit the title, the subtitle to be June 13th instead of June, I've already crossed it out, 8th, I think. Um, but all this is is putting back two positions into the OSEA contract that were previously in the contract, but they were bargained away because the pool wasn't in operations. So bringing back an assistant pool facilitator and pool staff, which includes lifeguards and swim coaches, and still leaves the credit earning options for students who would like to lifeguard or do some of that work. Uh, for school, for high school credit is also an option. Any motion? I move we approve the MOU for the uh, pool. Second. Okay. Ms. Richardson, any questions? No questions, just exciting to even be considering this. Good. Mr. Heisey. Just comment, yay, it's coming back. Yay. <laughs> My kids are so excited. Good. Uh, Mr. Schimmel. Uh, yeah, same thing. Just grateful that this is uh, moving forward. Good. Ms. Usher? Mr. Harding? As a clarification question, this does not affect um, student uh, employment for that are lifeguards and, and how they don't have to join the union? Or Correct. Correct. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Hendricks? I have nothing. Okay, I have nothing either. I am joining my fellow board members in the excitement, though. So, yes. um, all those in favor of approving the MOU with the OSEA for the pool wages? Raise your right hand. Excellent. Motion carries. A soccer co op agreement. So as you, oh, good, great, uh, awesome. Mr. So but I, Mr. Couch, you can take my microphone. Nice. And you can keep it if you want. 
take it outside, walk around. We'll be all good. <laughs> um, so as you all can see in your board packet, we are once again seeking uh, your approval for a co-op. Um, this is also going before the Klatskanai School District Board as well uh, in their next board meeting. Um, we did this two years ago, I believe, uh, seeking a co-op to benefit both of our schools. Um, in my statement here, um, we're seeking uh, co-op and girls soccer. This allows for additional opportunities for both schools. Historically, each school has not been able to field a team independently, and this allows for some stability in our participation numbers and helps the program continue uh, to continue to move forward. Um, this would be a four-year duration beginning in next season in the 2022 season and continue through the end of the 2025 soccer season. Um, in addition, this would move our uh, soccer team to the, the 4A Coapa League. Um, practices and games would be held at Rainier, and Klatskanai athletes would be responsible for transportation to and from uh, Rainier. Uh, I believe it would allow for more opportunities, um, including a better competitive balance for our athletes. And Klatskanai is in agreement on this and also seeking their approval. The Co-op League has been notified and has already built Rainier Klatskanai Co-op into their league, as has been done for the past uh, several years. Uh, that's the league we've historically been in as we've been a co-op. Um, so, yeah, just seeking your approval. And I would, any questions? Any questions, board members? We need to motion this first, and then we'll have some discussion. Because I got a laundry list of questions. Not really. Any motion? Yeah, I make a motion that uh, we uh, approve the soccer co-op agreement with class nine. Second it. Great. Great. Ms. Richardson, did you have any questions? I do not. Mr. Heisey, any questions? I noticed looking at this one, it says four years this time versus two. Mm -hmm. So was there a reasoning behind that? Uh, the benefit is it, it allows an increased continuity of our program. Um, two years, if we're kind of doing this again every two years, um, it can bring up some instability and questions um, as if, you know, as we approach the end of two years, or there could be kind of a scramble. This allows a four-year program to kind of build a, a more stable foundation and keep the kids together so we can start to develop those younger kids as well. Mr. Shemal? Uh, just trying to, um, just questions about funding as far as funding a coach and uh, is the transportation going to start from Rainier to the event site and how that works, yep. how it's worked in the past? Sure. Uh, so the transportation and funding would be from Rainier. Uh, transportation would be from Rainier. Um, the Klatskanai kids would be responsible for getting here and then we would transport from here to our, our game sites. Um, that would be their responsibility. Klatskanai is in agreement on that as well. Um, historically, we have split some of the fees, but this allows us to uh, keep our kids here together as we will have. Uh, last year, we had 17 girls that started the season on our soccer team from Rainier um, and only three from Klatskanai. And when they surveyed uh, at Klatskanai, they only saw a few girls coming over here again and we see roughly the same number that will be participating next year. Um, so we thought it would be uh, better to have our games and practices here if we're a strong majority um, of, of the team. Good. Ms. Usher, anything? Mr. Harding? My question has been answered. Good. Ms. Hendricks? Where do they practice and play their games at? Sure. Uh, we have the soccer field that's up behind the softball field. The soccer field behind the softball field. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yep. thank you. No problem. Um, so the first year that we entered into the co-op, the play didn't count. So it, like everything was JV, they didn't get to compete in any postseason play. Is that going to happen again this year since it's the first year of a co-op? I do not believe so. Um, when I talked to them, our schedule was set so that we're, we were competing as a varsity team okay, in good. the varsity league with the co-op, um, as historically has been done, thankfully we're not moving into a new league. We're staying in the same league in that 4A co-op league. So we were, we were built in early on. Good. Um, and sometimes we have challenges with the field. Um, I know last year <laughs> there was some issues at the beginning of the year with somebody driving on it. I noticed somebody was parked on it the other day. That was sweet. Um, and occasionally the Klatskanai field 
floods is right. there some flexibility that we can kind of if you know our field gets torn up by somebody making bad choices and sure you know we can move to that field uh, there's or? always flexibility uh, for example this year our football playoff games we were flooded here oh, yeah um and we we found a place to go play over in kelso um always flexibility and uh both uh, our ad and and Klatskanai's ad will will work on that as needed awesome and i i, I greatly appreciate that um you and before you mr blue worked hard to keep these girls playing soccer i know it's really important to Catherine, yeah <laughs> the upcoming team captain for next year so i really appreciate that um any other comments questions nope good all those in favor of approving the um, co-op agreement for girls soccer with clats can i raise your right hand uh, motion carries thank you thank you mr couch A public service scholarship, Dr. Hedrick? This is really a formality because it was a unanimous decision um, to provide these scholarships, but we need to go back and officially vote on them um, so it's in the record. So can I have a motion to approve the two um, scholarships uh, oh, that we awarded two weeks ago? Yes. I make a motion to approve the two public service scholarships for 20 Excellent. Um, any discussion? Definitely. How long do we get to keep doing this? Do you know? I mean, is it just magically money that appears every year? Thousand dollars? Boom. Yeah. Okay. Cool. I don't have the answer to that right now. Okay. Right. Love it. Right. It's from PERS, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes, Mr. Harding. Well, wasn't this part of the... Uh, uh, the promise? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't remember how long it goes. Yeah, I, don't, I don't know either. But yeah. I thought it was a one-time thing, but I'm really excited that it's... Well, I don't know how much money's left in it. I don't either. When you, re when you say the promise? Yeah, Oregon promise. Oh. Or thought, something. I like thought that. it was like the board made some kind of a promise. Well, we did. We had to show up for training like yeah. once a oh. month for, and for all of us to show up for training once a month. We'll look into that. It was impressive. Okay. We did it. Okay. Cool. Uh, did we vote? No. no. Whew, I'm like, gosh, you guys, what do we need to do next? Okay. So all those in favor of approving the scholarships that, that we awarded, the public service scholarships, two of them, raise your right hand. Motion approved. Uh, now we're going to switch over to this supplementary packet. Um, item J, Library IGA Addendum. All right, I can, I can fly through this one. So I did mention that the IGA is expiring. However, at the last city council meeting, they asked, th they asked for an option to extend it one month while they determine the staffing model that they're going to use. Um, I said I didn't think it would be a problem because it's cost neutral. We will bill them for whatever costs we have for personnel um, and so this is a draft of what I would present to the City Council uh, extending it up to one month um, through July and then we would bill them on August 1st do I have a motion to approve this IGA with Rainier I move we approve the IGA with Rainier. I'll second it. Ooh, I'm oh, going to call Rainier. Christine. <laughs> Miss Usher wins. Going to have to speed it up a little bit, Liz. Um, any, any discussion on this item? Mr. Schimmel. I would just ask for like, maybe a plan mm. moving forward. Like, um, how is this going to affect, uh, positive or negative, uh, the district as far as what we have here on site? In terms of the existing or the ex the addendum? Where we're going, moving forward. So by approving this, um, I guess, what's the, what, how do you feel um, is going to improve the what we have here 
or, or not? So the, the, the current IGA between the district and the city didn't benefit the district in any way. In fact, it ended up costing the district. And so <coughs> making it so that then the city employs its own employees, uh, we're no longer in the operations and hiring for the city librarian. So it really has no bearing in, except, in my opinion, better opportunities for students as we change our focus. So this one month extension just provides the city council with some flexibility uh, while they determine next steps. Yeah. Any other comments or questions on this item? <coughs> you all look like you're reading. Are you all reading? Okay, cool. Um, so all those in favor of approving the IGA addendum for the library? Raise your right hand. And motion carries unanimously. Um, next is item K, the bathroom remodel. So I, I just want to walk you all through, I mentioned at the beginning of the board meeting, um, some tentative plans, hopefully uh, we make them final tonight, um, to upgrade the facility a little bit. What we have is, if, if I can direct your attention to the orange drawings, um, so the first one is this, it says Commons Building at the bottom. What this is, is the it, it transforms our current um, bathroom facilities in the Commons, um, which is currently a boys' bathroom and a girls' bathroom, to one um, gender neutral bathroom. At the, the last two pages of that packet are, these are obviously not actual renderings, but they are examples of what some of the bathrooms would look like and so our facility would look something like that with the shared sink space but completely isolated bathroom spaces for students the goal would be to remodel that bathroom this summer as well as adding one additional single stall bathroom at the rainier junior senior high school which is next to the staff bathrooms which is at the bottom of the ramp um, and then we would evaluate uh, how many bathrooms we would want available for students and how many for staff. The other two bathrooms would continue to be there. So it's just increasing the options uh, for students. And then on the spreadsheet is really an estimate based on our architects. So these, these are the architects that have done some of the facility assessment work with us. This is just estimates and I believe will come well below. Um, but this is showing the commons with soft costs 163,000 and the single user bathroom 21,000. So I am asking. Do you need board approval for this? The only reason I wanted to is because of the cost, since it's well above 25,000 threshold. It is in the budget, but I do like to bring these to the board's attention that this is a project that we'll be doing this summer. Okay, so let's get a motion and then we'll have some discussion. I move we approve the bathroom remodel. I'll second it. Good. Uh, board comments, questions, Ms. Richardson? As long as we don't waive liability insurance. <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. <laughs> I know. We will not. Mr. Heisey? Uh, I'm just glad to see that uh, our school is actually taking an action on this. Uh, being a child or a parent of two children that uh, identify or, or is gay, uh, it's good to see that they are being recognized in some of their wants and needs as well as many other students within our school district that has been felt left out because that they didn't have their own place. Mr. Schimmel. We always give them the bum mic, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> he's <laughs> he's going to make a motion to get a new microphone. There we go. Kevin, um, as far as the, the drawings go, um, the, um, the, the, the large uh, handicap accessible ones, um, is there going to be um, sinks in, in with the size of that? Is there going to be sinks in that those bathrooms? No. No, all the sinks would be shared in the middle. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I had. Oh, ref 
referring to the high school, um, middle school, high school building. Uh, it looks like you're adding one, and that's um, handicap accessible. As yes. Well? Okay. Mm -hmm. Is there any plan moving forward, or ideas moving forward as far as like, I know there's going to be three total up there, mm -hmm. um, but obviously we're talking about hundreds of students. Um, most of them going to the trying to go to the bathroom at the same time. So right. I I I appreciate adding the one. I just think there's going to be a need moving forward for potentially um, more. But no, I agree. And if you look at that Excel spreadsheet, uh, the the two that I talked about is phase one. Phase two, we have quite a few more. Um, junior, senior, high school. Um, that's that's talking about transitioning the current girls' bathroom and the current boys' bathroom, as well as HPE gym. So we have some, but those are the only two that we can tackle at this time. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then um, my last question is the, the budget. Um, you said this is in the budget. Is it under capital improvement? Yep. Okay. Yep. Thank you. Ms. Usher? Um, my question is um, monitoring these bathrooms was there um what was the plan for because i know you guys went and did the walkthrough at st mm -hmm. helens and they had cameras yep is that our idea of doing the cameras yeah there's a high likelihood that that would be because remember each stall is completely private and so knowing who's coming and going is half the battle and so camera helps but also making it more of a hallway type setting so passersby can also see in and monitor is helpful yeah mr harding the, um, I got to see the uh, St. Helens uh, school that uh, had these type of uh, bathrooms, and um, they were quite positive to how they um, reduced the amount of uh, vandalism mm -hmm. to, to the to the facility, and and that's a, and I I think it's a good uh, setup. Now I'm glad to see it happening. Good. Ms. Hendricks? Um, this is going to be done in the commons, right, mm -hmm. where the basketball and all the sports activity goes. I would like, and I feel very strongly, about having a family bathroom also available for those parents with small kids so there's more room, mm -hmm. or for people who are just uncomfortable transitioning to the share all bathroom mm -hmm. yeah it's definitely something we can look at in the future there's i have to think of what spaces i know that at least in the drawing the larger um accessible bathrooms could meet that need but you're wanting something outside of that so we don't oh, yeah because Oops, oh, no, it's okay. Now, uh, we, we don't have anything within the commons. We have a couple other single stall bathrooms close by in our YTP office. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on where the other one is down there. Student services. Student services. So there are others. Access would be the challenge, like after hours, but we can look into those. Yeah, I mean, you know, with family bathrooms and that being these being the only restrooms down at the high school where the gymnasium and all of that is, um, you know, the family bathrooms are larger. You can take your baby in there and take care of it and, you know, and this really doesn't leave anybody um, with that opportunity uh, to do that. Mm -hmm. Unless you plan on stall installing the fold up units where mm -hmm. you can fold it down and change your baby or and I did know. notice on that tour in St. Helens one or two had that and in the larger stalls we could um, so yeah we'll look we'll look at the different options thank you no questions just a comment I'm excited to see that uh, Rainier is taking the step I think it's a important step towards inclusivity um, I would agree that um, it would be helpful for um, particularly the location of this. I hadn't really thought about the, you know, visiting mm -hmm. um, folks. So it, it might be really confusing for people to know where they're supposed to go. Mm -hmm. um, so it might be helpful to have um, 
you know, a family family restroom or, you know, uh, some sort of um, wayfinding to find a, a non a non non gendered bathroom. Okay. If that makes sense. I think sense. that's gendered. Yeah. <laughs> gendered bathroom. I hate gendering a bathroom. It doesn't make any sense to gender a room. Um, but you know, uh, whatever. I think it's I think it's a, a good step. Uh, any other comments, board members? Nope. Good. So, uh, all those in. Did we have a motion? Oh, whew, gosh, it was so long ago. Um, all those <laughs> in favor of approving the bathroom remodel, raise your right hand. Okay, motion carries again. Uh, wrestling room project. So project. fortunately, you've all received a proposal for some uh, safety improvements. Um, we're recommending, so per policy, anything above 25,000 expenditure does need board approval. And so this is just a shy over 25,000, um, including installation supplies. Uh, I'm proposing that we use ESSER two funds, um, if allowable by ODE, still waiting on a final approval on that. Um, but what I would need from the board is approval to expend those funds. In what other, and it would make no, it would make no difference whether it be ESSER two or capital or something else, but my preferred would be S or two. So do I have a motion? <laughs> there we go. Uh, I'd like to motion um, the approval of the wrestling room project improvement. I'll second it. Excellent. Any discussion? Ms. Richardson. We're looking at all of them. And so right now we have the use of one-time funds. So I'm trying to maximize those as much as possible. Um, and this is a short term. So more of the low hanging fruit. Mr. Isey. This is the wrestling room down there by the pool area. Mr. Schimmel. Um, I just want to make it known that this room is used at least 10 hours a week by PE classes throughout um, the whole school year. Um, I know it's called a wrestling room, but it's a room that the PE classes throughout the whole school year use. Um, if you took the hours um, that the use of that room is, um, I would say it's close to 70 percent used by PE versus wrestling. Um, just for the fact that the wrestling season's only four months. And so you got PE classes throughout the whole year. And with, especially with one gymnasium ten, um, um, used, um, the use is, isn't quite there as far as the full, um, what it can be used for. You got the high school gym as the only um, other gym um, able to be used by the PE classes. So with the weather in this Northwest, obviously, um, we got multiple PE classes um, in each period, um, a lot of periods. So um, I do know um, history that that that, u that room is used more than 50% by the the students throughout the school during during the day. Um, and uh, you know, if you want to look at what that uh, the rest of the program has done um, for the school to provide that room um, um, as as much as they can. Um, they've bought a lot of things um, to add to that room um, as well as their own program. But um, I think this improvement is important because it's not just rep um, improving the safety of athletes, but it's improving the safety of every kid in all those PE classes. Um, a small confined space and when you have uh, 20 plus kids some of those PE classes I think are up in the 40s at least 30s um, it's a confined space and it's just a matter of time if, if that if that 
room isn't improved. It's just a matter of time before we have an, an injury and potential um, issue. And so um, I think it's it's long overdue, and I appreciate um, the support. Ms. Usher? I don't have any questions, but I, I agree with Mr. Schimmel. Good. Mr. Harding? Well, I agree with the uh, upgrading the room uh, on the uh, safety aspect for both the uh, uh, PE classes and the wrestling program. And I wanted to point out that since this is an unexpected expenditure, um, contingency funds can be used for uh, this item also. Ms. Hendricks? I agree with Eric and, um, and the rest of them that I think that this is a real safety priority with so many students. I didn't realize how many teachers used the wrestling room. So it really isn't a wrestling room. <laughs> I mean, it's a space for kids to get activity, you know. So I think it's important to to make sure that they're safe. Good. I'm going to chime in with the support for the project. I know um, when Ms. Dumichel was talking to us about the importance of movement, um, I know a lot of um, other uses are happening in that room, um, mostly gym class. Um, I was talking to one of the uh, PE coaches, and he said there was five classes a day in there at some point during <coughs> the year. I thought that was kind of interesting. I was like, wow, that's, that's a lot of kids. Um, but we all know the weather is so beautiful, and we can always go outside. So um, I think this, this is an important um, project to, to happen, and I'm, I'm thankful that we're doing that. I did think that there was um, that the wrestling program was going to chip in a little bit of funding on this. Were, was that part of the plan? or That was part of the proposal that okay. I said no okay. because it's used for day-to-day -day operations so much. Perfect. Thank you. Um, cool. Okay. So any other questions, comments from the board? Ms. Richardson. I do concur with the other, the many other uses other than wrestling for their, this room. And I do understand that being a graduate from this district as Mr. Schimmel and Ms. Sesher are. My point on saying this wasn't to, um, make a negative comment about spending money on another sport it's to bring light to the other things that are academically important to our students when, it, when you're talking about expenditures and money like this so i don't think anybody interpreted it any other way i just they wanted to make sure everything is important so, so we just have, have the opportunity to address this one important item tonight so no points off absolutely um, so all those in favor of approving the wrestling room project, raise your right hand. Okay, that carries. Um, and I will say the board recommendation form that you're using is like super s slick. I really, really like that. Um, wow. And so with that, the most important agenda item of the night, finding a new chair. Um, I'm kidding. That was a little self-serving, wasn't it? Um, so I, before we... Um, accept nominations for the new chair. I do want to thank you all for letting me um, do this for the last year. Um, it was interesting and challenging and um, occasionally fun, <laughs> but it is a lot of work and um, I mean a lot of work and trying to make it fit with a job that is less and less remote. Um, and way far away, um, a three-hour commute and a job and a in a board chair position is very challenging to work with. So, um, while I continue, uh, you know, I intend to be fully active on the board. Um, serving as the chair just is not on my calendar for the coming year. So, um, I'm looking forward to supporting whoever the next chair is. Um, so, I will accept nominations. Anybody has any? I nominate Elizabeth Richardson for chair. Okay. Ms. Richardson? I appreciate your nomination. I have to decline due to the time involved in this, and my daughter is going to be graduating this year, and I have to be more present. And I 
appreciate that, but I, I can't. I'll nominate Mr. Harding. Mr. Harding, would you accept nomination? Before we vote on you, I guess we should probably ask you that. Yes, I would. Okay. For, but I, I'm only going to be on the board for one more year. You know, so, you know, I'm only going to be available for one year. Okay. Good. Any other nominations for chair? Anybody? This is going to sound silly, but I've got to ask three times. Any other nominations for chair? Any other nominations for chair? Okay, great. So, uh, Mr. All those in favor of uh, nominating or of a. a we need a second. It, bleh, 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 bleh. Yes, we do. Yes. Oh, yeah, we do need a second. <laughs> Would anybody like to. There we go, Mr. Schimmel. Thanks. I've done this for, you know, like a lot of meetings now, and I can't remember what I'm supposed to do. Um, so, approve uh, to approve Mr. Harding as chair. Raise your right hand. Come on. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. So six to all, all those opposed to Mr. Harding as chair? Abstain? Not even gonna okay, so six to we don't have any idea. Um okay, excellent. Uh and how about for vice chair? It, I will tell you a vice chair would be super duper helpful. And if you're going to be on the board for a little bit longer and you want to learn the ropes to maybe take over as chair after Mr. Harding leaves, this is a good time to, to learn how to do that. It was helpful and what has prepared me for being board chair if I hadn't looked at the time involved in it. So it's not as, I, I think my question, if, I, if anybody was considering being vice chair as Mr. Harding, how many vacations? Year. <laughs> 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 I say that with <laughs> well, I won't, well, be, I won't here. be here in the May meeting, so I know the vice chair is going to going to do the May meeting. And I would like to say that uh, that I think it's a good idea and uh, trying to involve a person in learning more about being board chair. Everybody should be a board chair just to learn the, how. How it works, and uh, and I think uh, since I'm going to be available for a year, that somebody else getting uh, an education on how to do it is uh, really important. I'll nominate Mrs. Hendricks for vice chair. Ms. Hendricks, would you accept that nomination? I accept. <laughs> uh, in, are there any other nominations for vice chair? I nominate Jeff Trask. Who? Who's Jeff Trask? I'm doing so wonderful with names. This fun gentleman to my left. Eric Schimmel. Yeah. <laughs> Who's home now? Just a moment. Eric, would you accept nomination? Um, I prefer. Um, I appreciate that nomination. I really do. Um, I, along with a couple other individuals on the board, yeah. have a senior this next year. I uh, would love to learn. Um, what it entails uh, to be a vice or uh, chair in the future as we go along, but I feel like I'm just a little bit too raw to the process. But I'm thank, thank, you. thank you, Mr. Trask. <laughs> <laughs> any any other nominations to vice chair? No. Any other nomination, Vice Chair? Any, oh, okay, cool. I uh, will pretend like I asked three times. And all those in favor of appro approving Christina Hendricks as Vice Chair, raise your right hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did we need a second? And a second. Oh my gosh. How about how about we go backwards and pretend like we didn't just vote? And it looks like Miss Usher wants to give me a second. Okay. And now everybody raise your hand again. There you go. All those in favor. Okay. So Miss Hendricks. Okay, so congratulations, Mr. Harding. I think this is your second, third, fourth. How many times have you been chair now? Four. Yeah, so he won't forget to, like, have the motion and the second <laughs> and get the, yeah, anyway. You know, uh, you've run a good meeting, and Thanks. it's a hard act to follow. I will make it very difficult. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs>
So let's do, do you, do you want me to finish out this meeting or would you like to take yes. over? Okay. Um, so how about um, we have future agenda item, the facility use proposal. Um, when are we going to see that? In July? Hopefully. July. Uh, board comments. Ms. Richardson? <coughs> I think it's very helpful to make our students, to help our students see beyond their front doors in our district. And when you can touch history, it really, really helps drive home the importance of it. And also, um, Ms. Dumichel, thank you for putting together what sounds like a really fun, flexible summer program. Well, first thing I'd like to say is congratulations to the class of 2022. Uh, great job for persevering the last couple of years. It's been mm -hmm. tough and trying. Uh, again, I'd also like to say thanks to the teachers that have left us this year. Uh, I know there's several of them that will be greatly missed because they big impact on a lot of students, especially my kids. Uh, Dr. Placido, thank you for your leadership, your guidance through this last year. Uh, looking forward to working with you longer. Mr. Harding, congratulations, and same to you, Ms. Hendricks. Mr. Schimmel. Uh, I'll reiterate a lot of what he just said. Um, just thank you to the teachers and then the admin um, that are leaving us this year due to retirement or moving. Um, I also want to thank um, the faculty, the um, the workers who put on the graduation. Um, I know it's not an easy task, and um, I know that students appreciated all that. So, um, again, thank you, Elaine, for um, your help with me with the questions I've had throughout the year or since I've been here, and I look forward to working with uh, Rod as a, the new chair. Thank sure. you. Ms. Usher. Um, ditto on everything they just said. <laughs> <laughs> and then also I would like to do a shout out to the middle school leadership and the teachers that were involved for organizing the middle school dance. It was last Friday. It sounded like it was a blast and the kids were so excited for it. Um, and then, and then also I would like to, um, in the summer, July, August meetings or something before the next school year to get a report on a plan for um, improving the separation of the middle schoolers and high schoolers for the next year. I think that's kind of an area that we could maybe improve on and, I don't know, an idea of maybe putting a committee together or something to help with some ideas for that. So I know work is underway, but um, it would probably be August once the new principal starts. Oh. I can have yeah. him present. Yeah, that would be great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mr. Harding? I'd like to say that I'm really uh, ex happy and excited to see the uh, Washington, D.C. program reestablished. I also think we did a, we passed a very positive budget, mm -hmm. and I'm excited to see how that staffing level impacts next year. Ms. Hendricks. I would just like to thank um, staff and administrators, all these people that put together that graduation. It was a wonderful graduation and ah, the excitement on the kids' face. It was just really cool to be there and, and watch that. And I know you guys did teach your every, everybody did a lot of hard work and, and I appreciate, I know the kids appreciated it as well. And then I had one other thing that is, have, have we talked to the PUD, Class and I PUD, about seeing if they can serve, bring their service out to um, Rainier High School? I can ask, but that's not a shop around service from my understanding. It's wherever you live, you're stuck with that PUD. Okay. Not stuck PUD if you're listening. We love all PUDs. Well, I guess I know at one time, uh, Rainier, the city, was not on 
Classic and I PUD, and they work with them and got in the co-op part. So I'm happy to ask and, and better learn about it because I have some contacts through the chamber. Okay. Sure. That'd be awesome. Thank you. Um, I've got a laundry list. I'll try to keep it short. Um, I'm, I think the budget this year is super exciting, so I'm right on board with Mr. Harding. I'm thinking we've got a pretty exciting budget year. The budget that we adopted lines up a nice year, and I really appreciate the work that Dr. Hattrick did putting that together for us. A um, uh, couple of the folks that are leaving Mr. Couch, huge impact in a very short time here. I really, really appreciated everything that you did. Um, I have three girls in my house, and you're their favorite teacher. Um, so uh, there are everybody's, everybody loves all the teachers, though. So, um, But Mr. Couch, definitely a um, uh, big fan club. Um, Miss Frederick was uh, my daughter's teacher for two years amazing um, and she has a fan club even in my office they've worked with her from for stem and so it's like oh you're from Rainier you know Corley Frederick well of course <laughs> so um, yeah just amazing amazing teacher um, let's see uh, thank you um, to all the uh, staff um, and students and everybody else who may work to make it a really special year for all of the exchange students. I know there was a ton of them, um, but it was it was a really fantastic year for them. And um, we're um, going through the I think the the hard part of you know them leaving and them wanting to stay. And I think all of the kids were here at school today and at track, and they'll probably show up again tomorrow. Who knows? Um, they're the only kids that want to keep coming back to school. So um, I know it's not always easy, especially those first couple weeks when they're trying to get used to everything, but I just really, really appreciate the, the time and energy and caring that everybody showed to them. Um, and um, kind of an odd, I guess, thing. Um, my daughter um, is going to be a senior next year with Liz and Eric's um, daughters, and, and yes, and um, but the three girls, <laughs> they've they've been playing on team sports together, and you know they've all all four of them have been here since kindergarten, right? Mm -hmm. um, I would have never thought that Catherine would go to the same school from kindergarten through twelfth grade. I mean, this was like the fourth place she lived, um, and we moved here when she was four. Um, so Rainier has just been a really excellent experience for her, and. Um, it's definitely a community, and I'm really grateful to be a part of it. Um, so I, as I sat there at the graduation this year, which was a really exceptional graduation, probably extra exceptional because the last two years have not been extra exceptional. <laughs> Thank you, COVID. Um, I just kept <coughs> thinking about, wow, it's, you know. And Mr. Blue had asked all the kids that started here in kindergarten to stand up, and it was like, wow, my kid gets to stand up next year. That oh, was pretty awesome. So we got to make sure that the yeah, Jeremy remembers to do that next year. Yes, when I write his speech. No, I'm kidding. Um, so um, pretty cool stuff. Um, I'm looking forward to continuing working with you guys. And um, yeah, it's been a great year. That's it. So um, our next board meeting is July 11th. And it looks like we have a work session sometime before then. I will send out a what do we call it a doodle poll yeah a doodle poll yeah um the the hope would be to do a work session directly before so we get it all in one night but that's a really long night so i'll send some out and get some feelers from you guys okay is it training or is it work it's the rescheduled work session oh. and then it would have a s part two which would be the board self-evaluation okay mm -hmm. good okay For all the basketball fans that have been trapped in this room and appear at the Golden State one. Yay! <laughs> awesome. We've been trapped. Have you been watching the game? <laughs> That's pretty funny. I don't even want to know. He's got like a little earbud in over here. As soon as we hear a motion, everyone can leave. I move, I know. we adjourn. I'll second. All those in favor?
Okay, let's get out of here. Thank you all. Officially signing because Liz, uh, the whole meeting, Elaine, this is so Elaine, I, I so she'll sign it all. I'm sorry, my yeah. Is not 